Okay, Councillor Rabini, you can. Thank you, Fiona. I can see the live up, so we are recording. Now, once all the members have joined the Zoom meeting, we will call the meeting to order and begin the live stream to new achieve, which has now been done. So welcome to this virtual meeting of the new Western Committee. My name is uh, Councillor John Rabini, and I am Vice Chairman of this committee. I am supported this evening by officers Beth Howland Smith, Development Manager, Lewis Jones, Planning Lawyer, Chris Friend. Oh, actually, Mary she was Chairman was Barry Devlin, sorry. Sorry? Barry Devlin, sorry, Mr. Chairman. I'm standing in for Lewis. Ah. Barry, De Barry Devlin. Yep. Sorry, I saw you sitting there, but my sheet said Lewis. Thank you. Uh, Chris French, area team leader, Jessica Sullivan, planning officer, Gemma Patterson, principal planning officer, Kimberly Sohn, democratic services officer who is clerking the meeting. Members and officers, please use the hand raise function within Zoom to indicate that you wish to speak. Please keep yourself on mute when you are not speaking. Please, can I also ask that any questions are kept brief and to the point. We will be timing speeches this evening. An alarm will sound when you have been speaking for four minutes. If any members in the meeting lose their connection temporarily, we will pause to allow them time to rejoin the meeting. If the webcast stream fails, then we will also have to adjourn until we are able to reset the connection. And my screen just now said that my signal was unstable. <coughs> so we're going to the agenda. Apologies for absence and substitutes. Kim, have we any apologies? Yes, Vice Chairman. Um, we have Councillor Beeman and Councillor Michaela Martin have both apologised. Uh, no substitutes for either. Thank you. Minutes of the last meeting uh, that was held on the 19th of January 2021 and they have been published. Can I have an agreement? Anybody wish to say anything? Yes, Agreed. Agreed. Councillor Beeman. Sorry, I have a councillor somewhere I can hear. No, then we can take that as read. Thank you very much. Declarations of interest. Kim, have we got any declarations of interest? No declarations of interest. Thank you. Questions by members of the public. Again, Kim, have we received any questions? None received. Thank you. Have we any member that have put in questions? None received. Thank you. And then item six, any relevant updates to government guidance or legislation since the last meeting? Uh, Beth or Chris, have you anything that you wish to update us on? Thank you, Chairman. There are no updates relevant to um, applications before members this evening. Thank you. So, Members, please note that the polling features within Zoom has been set up so the votes on the following items can be taken by general assent or using the polling. If a recorded vote is required, this will be done by roll call. Applications decided under delegated powers, that's the new ones. Planning officers, have we anything under the delegated powers? Thank you, Chairman. Um, there are no applications that have been determined in respect of applications relating to connection with members or officers since the last meeting. Thank you. So we'll go on to the gist of the actual agenda, which is item eight, application is subject to public speaking. Now we do have speakers on this, and this is the Land at Bourne Woods, which is pages five to 56. <clears throat> uh, Gemma, if I could ask you to present this, please. Yes, yeah, sorry, beg your pardon. Good evening, Chair, and uh, good evening, members. Um, I'm just going to bring the presentation up now. Hopefully, we can all see the presentation and everyone can hear me clearly. So, the application is for the change of use of land from forestry to a mixed use of ongoing forestry for filming purposes at the land at Bourne Woods in Farnham. The site comprises 
33.7 hectares of the 51.5 hectare Bourne Wood. The majority of the Bourne Wood is designated as open access land under the Countryside and Rights of Way Act 2000 and features a network of informal pathways and two bridleways. The site has a varied topography. The site is accessed by vehicles from an established visitors car park from Tilford Road, which connects to a tarmac drive that runs through Bourne Wood. There are several pedestrian accesses to the site around the periphery of the wood. Planning permission is sought for the change of use of land outlined in red from forestry to a mixed use of ongoing forestry with filming activities for six months. Filming activities comprise the use of the woods for site prep preparation, which includes the construction of temporary sets where necessary, rehearsals and filming, the use of vehicles for filming and, uh, and um, followed by the removal of all temporary structures. Filming events are anticipated to be staggered out throughout the calendar year. The proposal also includes welfare facilities for cast and crew. These facilities vary between film companies and chosen providers. However, they often comprise of porter cabins, marquees and trailers. Temporary signage and security marshalling would also be in place to direct visitors around the Bourne Wood. And members through the main features of the site. The uh, blue line here is the uh, main vehicular access to the site. Here is the car park from Tilford Road. The light blue line is a secondary access. The areas shaded yellow here and here are proposed to be the main set down areas and welfare areas. The area shaded pink is the bowl area. The orange dots of the public right of way and the yellow dots are the public rights of way. Moving on now, this is a uh, slide that demonstrates the environmental constraints on the site. So the areas hatched in purple shown here. These are archaeological features on the site. The uh, the areas patched here in a darker pinky purple are areas designated for conservation to heathland. The green striped areas for the sand lizard exclusion zone. And the green hatched area here to the site is a 50 meter noise stroke landscape buffer um, between the main activities on the site and the properties at Clumps Lane. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to take members through a couple of slides that will hopefully demonstrate the level of activity that's on site uh, during a filming event. Um, the site visit was carried out by myself during a filming event and um, during a filming shoot as well. So if we move on to this photo, this shows um, a set down area. Uh, within the site, which contains a number of vehicles um, containing filming paraphernalia such as uh, camera equipment and props. These vehicles are likely to stay on site um, in situ um, until the filming activity is completed. You'll see that they're just located in this area here when I was on site. Members of the public are still able to access this area, so they are able to walk around this area uh, quite freely, although intervene where it may be deemed necessary. This next photograph shows a cast and crew welfare area in the site. This is just located in this patch here. This photo was taken along the main vehicle highway through the site. Again, members of the public are able to access these areas quite freely. This photo has been taken along one of the more informal footpaths within the woods. Um, you'll see that filming equipment has been cordoned off and that there are signs played which are advising, uh, which are requesting members of the public to avoid these areas um, as they are able to access, again, this area quite freely. So it's, it's mainly more to avoid the, the equipment areas. And this photograph is a photo of the film shoot area, um, which tends to be quite small and well contained. Um, the members of the public are requested to avoid this area um, 
where possible and will be offered alternative routes to actually walking through through the fire. And this is just a, a, a picture of um, one of the pieces of equipment uh, they use for filming, just to get an idea. Moving on to the um, main matters of consideration, members are being asked to exercise their judgment in the matter of uh, the impact of the proposed mixed change of use upon the Greenbelt, um, having regard to the fact that the proposal is considered to be an appropriate development within the Greenbelt, as it would not fall within the exceptions set out in the MPPF. But that officers are recommending that there is a robust case for very special circumstances based upon a number of considerations. In the first instance, weight has been attributed to the temporary nature of the proposed filming activities and the intermittent nature of the associated filming paraphernalia and structures. And secondly, weight has been attributed to the economic benefits of the proposal, both to the applicant, which is the Forestry Commission, and also to the local businesses in the area. In the case of Forestry England, the proposal would provide additional revenue stream to continue to fund forestry management and initiatives across Southeast Forestry England managed site. The benefit of the purposes of ensuring that woods remain attractive destinations for public recreation. In the case of the local economy, it has been demonstrated that filming activities result in spending with local businesses for purposes of overnight accommodation, to using local tradespeople, catering, and general shopping in local convenience stores. For these reasons, the officers are recommending that they are very special circumstances that outweigh the harm to the green belt in respect to the inappropriateness of the development. And Moving on to the impact on the landscape in AOMB, members will note for the officer's report that the proposal would have some impact on the landscape character and the tranquility of the AOMB. However, officers have given significant weight to the presence of the existing natural visual buff buffer features of the site, the high use of the site for recreational purposes, and that the mitigation measures set out in the environmental management plan supporting this application um, uh, when balancing these impacts against uh, the conserving landscape and scenic beauty of the AOMB. It's also noted that the um, Surrey Hills AOMB officer has raised no objection to the proposal subject to the mitigation measures set out in the, the Environment Management Plan. With respect to the impact of the development upon the highway, network uh, viewed by the County Highway Authority who have raised no objection to the scheme and that's subject to the recommended conditions to secure a financial contribution towards the monitoring of a proposed travel plan by way of a section 106 agreement and for the provision and upkeep of a filming activity logistics plan. The County Rights of Way Officer has also raised no objection to the proposal subject to conditions to ensure that the rights of way are not obstructed or diverted unless carried out in complete accordance with the appropriate legislation. Moving on now to the impact on residential amenity. The filming activity on sun sites have been established for time and the current application seeks to provide mitigation measures such as restrictions on operational hours, the provision of a 50 meter buffer zone, the use of silence generators and communication methods, all of which would prevent significant harm to the amenities of the occupier of those residents adjacent to the site. With respect to biodiversity, both Natural England and Surrey Wildlife Trust are satisfied that the mitigation measures set out in the supporting environment management plan, along with further recommended conditions, are appropriate to ensure that the proposal will not result in any um, impact on the ecological value of the site. With respect to both air quality, quality and eye, both the council's air quality officer and the county ecologist are satisfied that the proposed mitigation measures set out in the environment management plan would not result in any adverse impacts on the Farnham air quality management area or the archaeological interests of the site. With respect to the impact of the development on the SPA, Bourne Woods would remain open for, the public, for public recreation during a filming event and would therefore not result in any undue pressure on the SPA as it is unlikely that the proposal would displace recreational visitors from the Bourne Woods during a filming event. I'd like to now move on to the update, the amendment to the report, 
and uh, the response to the council questions, which should provide some clarity as to the operational hour conditions proposed and the impact of the proposal upon the local economy. There is also a verbal update to the report members. Officers wish to make an amendment to condition seven, which relates to the construction delivery and reinstatement hours. The hours currently proposed um, for these activity seats are from 8 a.m. to 8 p.m. and officers are seeking to amend those activities to take place from 8 a.m. and 6 p.m. Monday to Friday. The remainder of the condition would, condition would remain as read. Therefore, the recommendation is that subject to amended condition seven as, outli as outlined in the oral update and that subject to conditions one to six and eight to 16 as set out on pages 48 to 54 of the agenda and the informatives as set out on pages 54 to 55 of the agenda and subject to the completion of a section 106 agreement to secure trans the contribution to the uh, travel plan within six months of the decision that permission be granted. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Gemma. Uh, good presentation, as always. Um, we have three speakers on this. Uh, could I just ask you, Gemma, prior to asking the first speaker, Tony Patterson, uh, would you mind just making sure that everybody in the public realises that there's no relationship between you and him? Yes, just to confirm, there is no relationship to myself and the speaker tonight. Thank you. Thank you, Gemma. Um, therefore, I will call on Tony Patterson, please. You have four minutes if you'd like to present your objection, please. I hope you can hear me. Uh, good evening. My name is Tony Patterson and I represent the Bourne Residents Association. TBRA does not oppose filming in Bourne Woods per se, but we do want to see controls which protect the ability of residents to use the woods for recreation and exercise and to protect the wider environment of the area. In 2014, the council approved a five-year application for film use with controls attached. While some administrative issues between the applicant and the council may have slowed approvals and affected usage, there is no evidence that controls on timing, access, and other elements during film activity have caused the film companies any problems and those should not be changed, and indeed implementation of the controls should be strengthened. There is also some evidence that changes in film content and increased use of CGI locations may have reduced demand. Forestry England is trying to expand usage of the woods for filming, with minimal evidence that there are overwhelming economic benefits to be obtained in exchange for permanent development in an AONB. They should be required to show in detail their estimates, estimations of the economic benefits. We have a number of concerns over the major changes compared to the previous permission. This application is for a permanent change of use. Serious issues that arise in future would leave the council with no ability to cancel the permission and no way for public concerns to be heard. The permission should be for five years, or at least the suggested review of the environmental management plan in condition nine should include a proper process for that review and should contain teeth to insist on changes to procedures as required or removal of the permission. Near neighbors are concerned because their 21 year experience is that noise and light pollution is a major issue during setup and filming. Reversing alarms, explosions and pyrotechnics have been a real nuisance in the past. The application simply includes no control over noise and measurement and management should be a condition. There are major increases in the requested daily timings for the phases of filming. I'm pleased that the construction time has been changed. Rehearsals time, however, has been added and is requested to be as filming plus Saturdays 1 to 9 p.m. and Sundays 8 till 1. It is self-evident that rehearsals and filming are virtually identical activities. These requests must be denied as unnecessary and egregious and rehearsals should, as before, be seen as a subset of the filming phase. It should also be clear that the timings mean first arrival on site and last departure. The night filming request is for occasional but unrestricted night filming up to 11 p.m. compared to a maximum seven night per year to midnight previously. This is excessive. There is also confusion in the council document over the disruption to bats, which refers to seven nights continuous filming, which must be amended. 
Finally, Forrester England must have a publicly available management plan for its own activities during filming. They have in the past refuted that they have any responsibility for the activities of film companies on site, as they claim they are bound by contract to follow the rules. That is naive in the extreme. Film directors are notorious for ignoring rules. During recent filming, the Southern Bridal Way was illegally blocked by lighting towers for days before Forestry England took action. We appeal to councillors to represent their voters' interests and add controls to ensure that Bournewood is not closed to the public or irreparably damaged by film activity. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're muted, Chairman. It's still mute. Oh. That's better. Yeah, I'm, I'm unmuted now. Um, I now call on the second speaker, who is Bruce, Ro Bruce Rosney from Forestry England, who is supporting. Thank you, Bruce. Thank you, Chairman. Um, my name is Bruce Rothney. I, I work for Forestry England uh, and I'm responsible for leading the team that manages our woodlands across central southern England. Uh, Forestry England has been acting as custodians of woodlands on behalf of the nation for over 100 years. Our aim is to create woodlands that people can enjoy, where wildlife can flourish and contribute to the health and prosperity of the local economy and the local community. Bournewood is a special place because it delivers all these qualities. As foresters, we plan for the long term. We want to pass on our woodlands to the next generation in a healthier condition and resilient to the future changes of our climate and society. The current pandemic has highlighted more than ever uh, the importance of places like Bournewood to support the health of local people and the economy of the local community. We do this in a sustainable way by reinvesting any income we generate from selling timber and fees from filming events back into improving public access and creating rich habitats. We've been hosting filming events at Bournewood now for over 20 years and, and we've learned a great deal over that time. We've used that experience to frame how we can manage filming events to protect all the qualities of the woodland. And we've devised a new approach called an environment management plan. Bournewood is leading the way with the film industry in this new approach. It's our blueprint for best practice. It defines all the measures a film company must achieve to minimize their environmental impacts and the disturbance of our host community. By setting this out clearly in advance, we and the local authority have recourse should standards not be met. We'll be keeping monitoring the success of the environmental management plan and will evolve it in response to future changes and any new lessons that we learn along the way. We have a member of staff dedicated to liaison with the filming companies and monitoring compliance with this plan. If any concerns arise, we take action to resolve them quickly. Every filming event is different. We've hosted larger events, but we're keen to encourage more smaller and shorter events. Some of the conditions under our previous permission were restrictive for the smaller film companies with more limited resources they have. So we are proud to support um, what we've provided to the creative arts education sector over the years. Bournemouth has become a key location for younger talent from local colleges to learn their craft and to build valuable experience. I'd also like to reassure you that Bournemouth will continue to be enjoyed by thousands of local people every year. It is their place and they rightfully want us to protect it for them. I'm pleased to say that we share that passion and that sense of care. We believe our application is respectful of everything that Bournewood can deliver for society. It balances support for the local economy with sustaining quality public access and robust protection for the wildlife and habitats. 
We're excited by this and, and I hope you will be too. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Now I have on my briefing sheet, we have a third speaker, a town council representative, ward councillor. Is that person present? Can he make himself known? Yes, I am. Councillor Blishin, Chair. Thank you very much. Councillor Blishin, if you'd like to take the floor, you have four minutes. Thank you, Chair. And good evening, everyone. As stated, I'm one of the board councillors for, for the Bourne Ward. Uh, there's been much ongoing interest from our foreign residents and others, and others in this planning application. There are 16 letters of objection and three letters of support for it. These are based on the experiences of those Farnham residents and others on the filming, mainly since the previous planning application was granted in 2014. This current application addresses some of those concerns and I will address further concerns noted shortly. Um, this proposed planning permission, if granted, should be for a five year period and not open ended. There should be the opportunity for a review at the end of the five years or earlier if necessary. As it is for a six month period annually, the start and finish months should be advised beforehand to the councils and the local residents for their information and convenience. This could also be publicized by articles in the local newspapers. The previous conditions agreed in the planning application, WA 2014-5050, which was granted and expired in March 2019, have proved to be mainly satisfactory and should be maintained with a few new conditions added. Forestry England, I note, have appointed a contact, sorry, a contact officer to liaise with uh, Farnham and Waverley councils and the local residents to answer any queries or problems, which is very good. As owners of the planning permissions, uh, they are responsible for monitoring and supervising all filming activities on and off site to ensure compliance with the planning and other conditions. This forestry officer, fo sorry, Forestry England appointed officers contact details should be readily available to the councils and the local residents perhaps again in the local newspaper. Um, excuse me a minute while I get into my notes. Right. There should be no filming activities on Sundays for the peace and enjoyment of the local residents and the security staff should remain on site if necessary then. Saturday filming should also finish at about one o'clock. For longer filming projects, it would be beneficial if their start and finish dates are advised in advance to the councils and local residents. Neighbours amenity. I'm concerned about the use of oil burning smoke generators on site, which is no longer acceptable in the 21st century due to the inevitable pr pollution problems ca caused, which it creates. They've already caused smoke clouds in some neighbours' gardens and also could affect other local people and traffic. Similarly, the use of low flying helicopters must be limited their decibel noise levels in low flying zones can cause permanent hearing damage when measured with a DBA meter from the ground nearby. A helicopter was on occasion low flying for much of one day causing distress to the locals. The fire brakes must be left in place or at least returned to their original positions daily as soon as filming is completed. There must be no further blocking of bridleways and any footpaths by lighting towers and other items of site equipment at any time. Filming and other staff on site must not park their lorries, cars and other vehicles on any of the pu public rights of way, but use their allocated site and other off-site parking areas instead. The Bourne Woods public car parks are there solely for the use of visitors and not for the filming people. The entrance lane to the public car park is already in a poor state of repair, including several potholes. There is a stated maximum of 476 vehicle movements allowed on site per filming project. This seems a very high number and who's responsible for monitoring and counting them? I note there is a 1.2 million spend in the local economy claimed over a period of two years. Farnham does not appear to have seen much of that according to my sources. Um, an SBA contribution will be appreciated here, I believe. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Bishop. Okay, that, that's the speakers I've had. Can I now ask, please, for questions? So I have the first one, Councillor George Hess. 
Hello, good evening, everybody. Thank you, Chair. Um, I've got a few comments I'd like to read out. Um, Forest England estimate filming can produce between two to 400 vehicles per day between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. on the local road network. And for those of you that know it, the roads in the Tilford and Old Frencham Road area are very narrow and windy. Clearly, this doesn't include traffic associated with night filming because that's obviously after 7 p.m. There are mitigation measures being proposed that the proposed number of vehicles entering Bournewood, uh, should they exceed more than 476 daily, a separate planning application would need to be submitted to Waverley Borough Council for planning, cons planning consent. Really? How would that work? Does anyone here actually think that would happen? And where did that strange figure of 476 come from? Has it been magicked up? The other absolutely reassuring mitigation is that since Surrey Highways have assessed that the additional volume of traffic would not have a material impact on the safety and operation of the adjoining highway, so long as some cash passes their way in the form of £6,150 for, mon for monitoring the proposed travel plan under a Section 106 agreement. So that's all right then, isn't it? We should ask ourselves, how far will £6,150 go to monitoring vehicles if an open-ended permission was granted for many years into the future? It's pennies, obviously. The use of Bourne Woods for filming, driving in vehicles, some heavy, building sets for up to six months, helicopters, unlimited night filming, light towers, smoke-making burners, thunder flashes, helicopters, people charging around, probably slaughtering each other, doesn't accord with the protection of endangered species, 38 potential breeding species of birds, sand lizards and other mammals. In fact, it flies in the face of the much vaunted protection of the Surrey and Thames Basin heathlands, SPAs and SANGs. There's not even a requirement for an environmental impact assessment. Really, this is absolutely Alice in Wonderland stuff. Maybe where money making filming is concerned, Bourne Woods simply don't count. It's all a very far cry from the natural beauty criterion for an A and B. Landscape quality, scenic quality, relative wildness, relative tranquility where natural sounds such as streams or bird song are predominant, natural heritage features such as distinctive geology or species and habitat. And also the economic benefit to the Farnham area has been suggested at being 1.2 million pounds over a two year period, which if you divide it down is 50,000 pounds every week. Where is the evidence for this? Where's the evidence that they are actually employing local people, local firms, etc.? There's no evidence. It's just being postulated and we're all supposed to accept it at face value without any evidence at all. So I, re I, I, I really um, am very against this whole filming in the woods. I might be in a club of one, I don't really care, but as far as I'm concerned, I hope my colleagues will agree, this is an unacceptable application and should be absolutely, totally refused. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hess. If I could now have Councillor Edmonds, please. Thank you very much, Chair. The information I've received tonight indicates to me that filming is far more invasive than I first thought. So I've carried out, it doesn't affect my original detailed analysis, which was as follows. Actors in the film industry desperately deserve our support and encouragement for recovery. Sadly, this application is not sustainable for the following reasons. The forestry is responsible for promoting sustainable woodland management. Sustainable filming is acceptable, yet this application has an un unsustainable environmental impact. The aim of the screaming in opinion is that environmental impact assessment be only carried out where significant environment impact occurs, thus ensuring efficient use of public and private resources. That's understood. Conversely, <coughs> excuse me, a developer might not want to complete an environmental impact assessment. 
for reasons of competence, cost, delay, and, pub and public transparency. What is important to me is public transparency. The public should have a significant input in any planning decision. Environmental impact assessments ensure that the environmental effects of a development are considered, are regulatory compliant, and EAA exposes the development to transparent public awareness and engagement. The public really need to be engaged. This is a very environmentally sensitive development, yet screening concluded that the sorry, environmental impact assessment was not required. The screening opinion must consider the quality of information provided. In this application, the, environment, the environmental management plan is seriously flawed. It provides options rather than obligatory conditions. It is not a controlling management plan. It is feeble self-regulation, which is deeply disturbing. The environmental management plan fire risk assessment and precautions are not sufficient, especially when climate change has increased forest fire risk, which should be given significant consideration. It is also not clear the conditions for filming in the, why the conditions for filming in the new forest are much more burdensome than those proposed for Bowen Wood. Why should Bowen Wood have lesser restrictions and controls? If a competent environmental impact assessment were to be carried out, sustainable filming in the Bowen Woods may be proven. This application seeks unlimited duration, which is totally unacceptable, for which the environmental harm and recreational harm far exceeds economic benefit. The key issues are incompatibility with the farm plan, sections development and conservation. Government planning policies, paragraphs two, international obligations, especially the EU's convention. Paragraph 58, effective enforcement. Paragraph 134, green belt encroachment. Paragraph 14, beneficial use. Paragraph 143, impro inappropriate development. And paragraph 144, potential harm. Unfortunately, it was, it was with deep regret under these circumstances that I cannot support this application. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Edmonds. Can I now call on Councillor Adams, please? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes, I'm uh, obviously the Councillor for uh, Frencham, which is uh, the bordering parish to um, the Bourne, and um, I hope everybody noted that they've objected to this application for a number of reasons. Um, I know that the filming has been uh, part of the landscape in that area for many years, uh, 21 apparently, uh, it's a, a long time, but at the same time there's never seems to be more than about two or three films uh, a year. So six months seems to me to be um, rather excessive, this request. Uh, and the only reason that could be put through was because perhaps the Forestry England are hoping to have many more filming operations. I would have thought um, it could be significantly reduced. Um, four months would for, be quite a reasonable amount of time. Um, also, I mean, the six month period with uh, possible extension um, also leaves very little time for fauna to recover in the gaps. So, I mean, again, that once it's driven away, it's unlikely to return. Um, I'm surprised that the AOMB officer has not made a comment because the filming activity impinges on policies P1 and P2 of the now statutory Surrey Hills Management Plan 2025. Uh, in particular, we are concerned in Frencham about the dark area that should be, that exists um, over the Bourne Woods and, in, uh, and, in, uh, uh, and close to it. Um, there seems frequently to be overflow from the Bourne Woods when filming occurs. Um, there is a field in the corner of the Reeds Road and Tilford Road, and very often that seems to be filled with ancillary trucks, feeding stations, 
so they're not um, they're not actually benefiting economically to to the village they are self-contained but uh, in this dark area a field which is say normally is completely dark we have 40 foot arc lamps erected all around the site well that's totally unacceptable So I think uh, this activity is, uh, say, the arc lamps. Um, and again, I echo what other speakers have said, that um, the revenue benefit appears to be negligible, especially to the Hollybush pub and the Barley Mow. Um, I'm, so I'm surprised that I'm not sure certainly where all this money goes, because it doesn't seem to come to uh, Tilford or Frensham. Um, I can understand that uh, the uh, forestry England wants to have additional revenue and that seems quite reasonable. So, I mean, I can understand that a certain, I'm, I'm not objecting to all filming there, but I think it needs many more controls and should be much more limited. Thank you, um, Chairman. Sorry, my microphone was going on and off. Uh, thank you, Councillor Adams. Can I now have Councillor Coburn, please? Yes, thank you, Chairman. Um, I think I'm in much the same position as many people, not as extreme as some, but um, I have no problem with some filming in the Bourne Woods. Um, you know, I don't think you can put a genie back in the bottle and we have a situation where the woods has been very successful and there is no doubt that Ucker uh, have used it uh, in their filming um, studies. So, you know, there, there is some benefit from it. Uh, but like everybody else, it's got to be balanced. And, you know, I know most of my evidence is anecdotal, but people that have been in the Bourne Woods, and, and I speak to people even now in, in lockdown on a daily basis, who walk their dogs there or go for their walk there. And there's no question that their rights of way have been um, barred by filming. It's just one of those things that occurs. Everything that Councillor Adams has just said occurs. There is this enormous great field with arc light. And I think this is really the frustration of local residents. It's that lack of control. And I think if we had something a little tighter in terms of hours and, and even the months, uh, then I think we could really support this with enthusiasm. But you know, the idea that we just give a permanent per permission with these extraordinarily long uh, hours of um, activity, uh, I really can't support condition six. You know, I think anything on a Sunday, you can say rehearsals are quiet, but of course, if you're rehearsing a gunfight, you're rehearsing a gunfight, it's still going to make a noise, not quite as bad as the actual filming. So I'm leaning a little bit to say, you know, that as it stands, I'm finding this very hard to support, although basically I support filming in, in the woods. Um, and I think it is all down to those controls. I think we do need to look at that word permanent. I think to give any permanent change which affects the landscape like this um, is foolhardy. You know, I think there has to be a check and a balance on this. So I couldn't support something without a constant five-year review. Um, I won't talk about the economic benefits, but I have to say I haven't seen any of them. When I first asked way, way back in the process, uh, somebody assured me that Ascot was doing very well out of it. Well, you know, good, good for Ascot, but it doesn't do much for the Bourne or, or Greater Farnham. So I'm not quite sure where these figures come from. I do like the idea of smaller, shorter events, and I can understand why the previous application did work against smaller film companies. It was more difficult for them to process, to do something for a short time. So I can understand all of that. Uh, and I can understand the need, therefore, to make certain aspects uh, slightly easier and more flexible. But I really do think the hours we've put in here, the fact that this is permanent, um, I am really worried that we give permission to something that is really going to affect the residents. 
so many people walk their dogs there, so many people walk themselves there, so many people live round um, the Bourne Woods, you know, there are houses dotted round, not just Clumps Road, but round the other side. So we're not talking a, a totally isolated place. And I know they've put the buffer zone in. So, you know, I accept all of these uh, mitigation measures. But when it comes down to it, a helicopter, a gunfight, all these things that we know have happened there, make a noise. Um, and I do really think that we have to make sure that we are Yes, encouraging the, uh, the filming, and I hope it does eventually feed into the local economy. Um, but at the same time, we have to be remind, mindful of the uh, residents who live all around, and there are a lot of them. So I think as it stands, this is too much weighted uh, in favour of the film companies, and not enough uh, thought has been given to the immunity of the people who live around, and I think also to the conservation because the whole point is that we have a gap to reinstate any damage that was done. So, uh, you know, I, uh, I, I'm with everybody else here. I have a feeling this is a step too far. Thank you. Thank you, thank you Councillor Coburn. If I could now call on Councillor Hunt, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, so share the same concerns, I guess, uh, as the other councillors in respect of the balance between um, maintaining the, the beauty of the, the woods and um, continuing to have filming there. I mean, it seems to me that, you know, th there's been filming there since 1999 and that agreement, that temporary agreement, sounds like it's been there since 2014. I guess one question I have that I couldn't find is if, um, if there's going to be filming for up to six months of the year under this new proposal, what has it been previously? What has the limit of it been previously? Uh, other people might know that I couldn't couldn't find it, but that would be interesting to know. I mean, personally, I mean, I love walking around the woods and I love walk, taking the kids on their bikes and walking around the woods. But equally, I love it when um, I see that there's filming happening. And uh, although I'm not convinced at all about the figures that are suggested um, in the brief about the the contribution to the local economy, um, you know, it's not always or life is not always just about the impact on the economy and I think you know personally I get excited and you know a sense of pride for the fact that films like Gladiator and Children of Men and apparently some of the Harry Potter films have been part part filmed there so um, I'd, I'd kind of like that question answered if possible the difference in terms of the length of time that uh, the filming is is allowed under the new proposal versus the previous one but given the infrastructure is pretty much there and given they've been filming there since 1999, personally, I, I, I am pretty much for it. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Um, one of the officers, are, are you prepared to answer Councillor Hunt's question now or are you going to answer it afterwards? I can, I can answer it now. Um, chair, Thank you, um, if, if that's all right. Um, so um, prior to the um, previous temporary consent, the filming activities have been carried out under the permitted development rights of, um, of the land. Um, so they were able to carry out um, filming up to 56 days. Um, then to the temporary consent that was granted planning permission that's that's looking for the same that was the same sort of um, time period as being sought under this planning application for um six months um that permission previously ceased and filming can now carry on again under permitted development but changes to permitted development mean it can carry on to only 28 days um a calendar month um so um should permission um not be granted tonight they would still be able to film on the site but only under the permitted development for 28 days thank you all right can i just ask just to clarify the temporary arrangement that was in place from 2014 that allowed them to film for how long again the same the same that's being sought for here up to six months so up to six months yep. so in effect this is permanently putting in place what has been in there for the last seven years yes with no with no other differences uh, uh some changes but the, the time scales no it's it's the same but essentially it's the same but on a permanent basis rather than temporary in terms of the time that they want to film, yes. Right. Okay, thank you. But the length of the days is different. Yes. 
sorry, can we have one at a time, please? Um, I'm finding it difficult to see who's speaking. Perhaps when you do speak, you can give your name first because I can't see all your pictures. I can only get 20 something on, on the screen. So, sorry, Councillor Coburn, was that you wishing to say something? Sorry, Chairman, thank you. No, I was just explaining that the length of the days are different. I didn't think the officer had quite pointed that out. She mentioned the months, but in fact, there's huge changes to the length of the days, and that does make a big difference. Thank you. So I'll now go on to Councillor Neil, please. Uh, th thank you, Chair. Um, well, of course, we are very fortunate to have this wonderful piece of woodland in our midst. Um, I've walked it many times and sometimes I've gone down there, especially to have a look at what the filming is up to and the castles that they're building in the field. So, you know, that is a plus, I think, um, that we have that resource in the first place. I'm interested to see that Forestry England um, support the application. And of course, they are the people who are particularly minded to look after it in, in what its form is, both from the, you know, the the wildlife and the um, trees and everything else there. So I'm interested in that point of view. Um, I do think we perhaps have to accept some inconvenience um, that this, you know, does occur, does bring us when the filming is going on. That's perhaps inevitable, really. Um, you know, and when you're doing filming, all sorts of things will crop up, which means you have to have extended hours or you have to refilm something, it must be quite a difficult thing to, to manage and plan. So I think we need to, you know, be a little bit flexible there. Um, the weather comes into it as well, you know, all sorts of things must affect what they do. Um, the, the fact that we do filming here, of course, you know, does bring people to the area and it brings attention to our area, which must have economic benefits um, in some way you know um when the film people are there they do stay in the hotels in farnham um so they do spend money in the local economy it's probably very difficult to quantify exactly what that is but it's bound to be the case and um you know if more filming goes on i guess there will be more of that um i'm obviously wouldn't want it to be a continual activity um you know so some sort of constraints on the the periods of time does obviously make sense um, so what else have I got to say? Yeah, economic benefits, as I say, important. Um, UCA, I think, gets involved to a certain extent. Um, we have students here that are studying film and all that sort of thing. So it's a good opportunity for them to be involved and to see what happens in the real world in their industry that they're moving into. So broadly speaking, I support the application as long as we have reasonable constraints on, you know, the amount of time that they can use it for. Um, that's really, I think, mostly what I wanted to say. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Before I go on, I did see a message come up and I was going to say something anyway, and I see officers have underlined it. We have a chat function, but this is not meant to be a debating part or to uh, advise other councillors. We are open and transparent. Would you please refrain from giving views on chat unless it's um, hands up and you're prepared to say in the open, please. Thank you. Councillor Dixon. Good evening. Thank you, Chairman. Um, I would like to uh, talk about uh, this application and particularly the very special circumstances that say this is going to be of some economic benefit to our, to our community. Uh, so I did some research off my own back this afternoon um, and I found a, a report from the British Film Association that set out in detail the benefit of filming to the local community. So I'm going to read it out. It says here that for every one pound, well, this is a bit complicated so bear with me, for every one pound that is spent by a film by, on the local authority, it is a further 2.76 pounds, 2 pounds 76 to us, is generated for the local economy. They say that 1 pound 79 goes to local businesses such as cafes, shops and hotels, and 97 pence goes to other supply chains. 
Um, so I'll put, so this means that if we charge 10,000 pounds to a film to be in our vicinity, the actual benefit to our community is not 10,000 pounds, it's 27 pounds, 600 pounds, 600. So that's the multiplier effect. And this is a detailed study done uh, for the British Film Institute. And I'm gonna put a link in the chat so that you can refer to that. I also came across another study uh, which shows um, how strong the film industry is in our, in our part of the, in the Southeast. Um, and uh, so the number of companies in the Southeast to, are involved in film production, post-production, film distribution, not the cinemas we're talking about. There are 960 uh, films in the Southeast, which is the highest number after London. There are 476 in post-production and 80 in film distribution. So that's over uh, 1,500 companies in our area who are involved in the film industry. So by providing this um, venue, we are supporting all of these businesses as well as supporting ourselves by the financial benefits that we are, are providing to our community. And here I'm putting in the chat a link to the study which shows the number of companies that uh, provide work in the film industry in our area. The other thing I would like to uh, bring out is that the forestry speaker was very, very clear in that saying that this money would allow them to invest in this site and in other sites and that they valued the forests. And they also said that at all times, the um, film sites would allow access to, to people and they showed, and we saw uh, uh, Gemma showed us some photographs where there was like, yellow tape but there was full access to the site as much as possible for the for the filming so that's and i think there is one other special circumstances that actually uh, Gemma Patterson didn't bring up which i would probably like to add to this in the and dan touched on this the council dan Hunt, Count touched on this is the inspirational aspect of all this in that there is as a, a nothing more exciting uh, than, than coming across a film set on your walk. And it's extremely inspirational to our young people. And, and, it, and it's a good inspiration because what I'm trying to say is if a, a 12 or 10 year old sees a film set in a field tomorrow, there is every chance that they'll be able to find a really good job, a really high paid job in our creative industries, which are very strongly represented locally. And we shouldn't really forget that. And it's also brought uh, fame and notoriety, um, notoriety, sorry, in the best possible way to our small community. And it does make Farnham a really exciting place to, uh, to live. And just in case, um, I hope you're going to, won't mind if I just illustrate this. Um, I just got this on my computer this afternoon, just to remind you how exciting it can be. This was, of course, filmed. What do you want us? Thank you, Councillor Dixon. Can we just keep on um, the planning um, reasons? Um, yes. Please? I think the point is that, just stopping that, is that um, that is actually that piece of film is one of the most famous pieces of film um, of the last 10 years and is used, has been repeated and reduced millions of times on the internet. Uh, it's, it's used in memes, on Twitter, on the internet, people have it on t-shirts and it was filmed here with us. And we, we contributed to that. And at a time when television and creativity and films give us a little bit, you know, given so much pleasure to so many people in these difficult times, I just think that that inspirational element is, is really important. So I will be, I can understand the need for measures, 
uh, I think it's clear that we are renewing something that was in place before. Uh, I think it's therefore a very good thing and I will be supporting this proposal. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Dixon. And as the officer said, please let's not have any <laughs> film clips from anybody. Thank you. Um, before I go on to Councillor Clark, can I please ask Barry, you, you had your hand up. Oh, yes, Mr. Chairman, it was really to um, clarify the uh, question that Councillor Edmonds uh, raised about um, full environmental impact assessment. Um, just to point out that an application for a further screening opinion to determine whether full environmental impact assessment was required was in fact made in October of last year, supported by various documents, including a full habitat regulation assessment and a review of the baseline management plan, plus many other supporting documents. Um, this document was reviewed by our external consultant, Dr. Salder, and she produced a very extensive study in return, um, which confirmed that there was not, uh, not a sufficiently significant environmental impact, impact or impacts caused by these proposals, which would require full, a full environmental impact assessment. And on that basis, um, op planning officers under delegated powers um, issued a negative screening opinion indicating that full environmental impact assessment was not required. Um, so, so therefore, Mr. Chairman, just to um, demonstrate that this has been got into um, and has been put through due process in the normal way and the decision regarding the need for full environmental impact assessment and the negative screening opinion has been available on the council's planning website since last October. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you very much. Much. I'll now go back to my list. Councillor Clark, please. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good evening. Uh, just briefly, uh, it benefits to the local economy. In fact, uh, can be more than you think. Uh, our eldest son was employed as a film extra on The Gladiator. He played a Roman soldier for four weeks at £20 a day. But unfortunately, his parents didn't see a penny. But uh, more seriously, uh, if you look through the papers, you see words like generally, typically, historically, generally again, historically, anticipated, are proposed, usually, on occasion. And then we come on to permanent permission. Well, I, in any kind of contract, I just can't support permanent permission when we have the opportunity, if required, to review the conditions on a 10 year cycle. So under the permanent permission, I don't think I can support this. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Can I now call on Bess? I see your hand is up. Did you want to add something? Thank you, Chairman. Um, yes. I mean, I've been listening very carefully to um, comments made by members, um, and although I acknowledge there are other issues, it does seem that predominantly the concerns revolve around timings, that's time of day, months per year, etc. It is open to members um, to seek to defer the item, to allow for further negotiations with the applicant, um, and it, that would be in consultation with the ward, the affected ward members, chairman, vice chairman. Um, so I just wanted to really float that with you, that it, that, that remains an option to you. Thank you, chairman. Thanks for that. Um, now I see from the hands range, most have already spoken. I will call on Councillor Ishwood as he hasn't spoken yet, please. Thank you very much, chairman. Really just very quickly, Builders aren't allowed to work on a Sunday in Waverley or bank holidays. Therefore, why do we allow film crew? I would say no working on Saturday or Sunday so that we local people can enjoy the Bournewoods to the full. I'd also uh, suggest that four months a year, as Councillor Adams said, is adequate. And I would like to limit the... Uh, 
timing to five years so we can review the whole situation and see what pricing we can put on it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Isherwood. Now, all the hands I've seen now have already spoken. Um, can you please remember what I said in the first place, please? Can you keep your second speech briefly and without repetition? Thank you. Councillor Hunt. Yeah, um, try not to repeat, but in my view, having listened to what everybody's said, we have global Oscar winning films that, um, you know, completely stand the test of time that will be viewed by generations being filmed in the local area. If I take my kids to the woods and I tell them that's where Harry Potter was filmed, their eyes are going to light up. And who knows what inspiration that gives to young people in the area to believe that they can go and be a part of that world. And personally, I don't think there's a price you can put on that. Absolutely agree that there has to be a balance in respect of um, you know, the natural landscape and, and, and maintaining that. But I would still wholeheartedly support this. The only thing I do think would be sensible in respect of the permanency would be to um, perhaps review it every five or 10 years. But in essence, it seems as though much of the terms are continuing what was in place before. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. I'll now ask Councillor Keane, if she's not spoken yet, please. Thank you, um, Chair. Um, well, I have actually walked in Hornwood when, when there has been filming going on. Um, my grandchildren are extremely excited and wanted to know what the film was. I couldn't tell you now, I've forgotten. Um, but I, I can understand the feeling um, that maybe there should be a review of um, um, the filming every five years. Um, and I would support that and possibly um, maybe four months instead of six. But, you know, it, it is quite, it's quite an exciting thing um, to know that you have filming going on in your local area and I'm sure it probably does help the local economy although that as, as has been said you can't actually pinpoint exactly how much it does help um, but for me I you know this has been going on for quite a long time I admit I don't live within the area of Bournewood um, and I would agree that having um, lights up until 1am is awful um, very very intrusive and helicopters going overhead, but that can be addressed. And I think if we can address issues that local residents are unhappy with, I'd be happy to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keane. Um, Bess, you have your hand up again, I believe. Apologies, Chairman. I just hadn't put it down from last time. Apologies. Thank you. Councillor Coburn, please. Thank you, Chairman. Well, I think Beth's intervention was very timely. Let's just get this straight. Nobody's against the filming. We've supported it for years. You know, we have no problem at all with filming in the woods. What we do have a problem with is the timing and the conditions. And if Beth has given us uh, a way of dealing with that so that we can have more consultation on that, I mean, condition six, I certainly couldn't support as it stands. And it's very similar to what Councillor Isherwood has just said. So if somebody would support me, I would suggest that we go for deferral on this one, uh, get some of these conditions just toughened up a little bit, uh, have a word with the local community, and then I'm sure we can all come to some arrangement. But just because we don't want people awake at one o'clock in the morning doesn't mean we're anti-filming and doesn't mean that we don't understand the pleasure that it brings to people. But there is a balance between the people who live around that site and, you know, they're, uh, as Peter says, or Councillor Isherwood said, if they want to have a, a lie-in on a Sunday morning, I think they should be allowed to do so. It's quite simple. So I would go for a deferral if I have a second. Please support my, um, Chair. Officers, did you get there? We'll come back to that. If we, if we could finish off the last two questions, and then we'll come back to that before we take the recommendation. Uh, Councillor Adams. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman, um, because actually Councillor Coburn's just said much of what I was going to say as well. So I would be happy to second her motion of uh, deferral. I think that uh, there are a lot, as there are the key uh, factors of uh, the length and the days, 
But I think there are another a number of other smaller issues which also need to be sorted out in a negotiation. So, um, yes, I would support deferral. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Edmonds, you're the last one I have. Oh, Councillor Edmonds. Thank you very much, Chair. In response to Mr. Devlin's comments, I carried out a thorough analysis. I'm aware of both screen and opinions. I still believe through analysis and environmental impact assessment is required. And for any councillor comfortable with the conditions, perhaps they should read the EMP summary on page 23, which is full of should be's, may be's, and will be's. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Edmonds. In fact, I've now got another hand, Councillor. Now, you've asked several questions, so please make this brief without yeah. repeating. Thank you. Yeah, so I just think that it's worth bearing in mind that any conditions that we look at in terms of time, i.e. Sundays or particularly at night, you know, it's just intrinsic. It's inevitable through the nature of what they're doing that sometimes because of the production that they're doing and what they need to be filming, it may need to be at night. So it's just going to be, you know, we've got to take that into consideration if we want um, you know, studios that are doing huge films worth hundreds of millions of dollars to, uh, uh, you know, to come and choose the woods. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Hunt. Now, before we come to the vote and the recommendation and the deferral, can I just remind, please, uh, Councillor Merrilies, I'm very sorry, but because you were late to the meeting and couldn't join in, I'm afraid you cannot vote on this motion. Thank you. So we have a new recommendation, which I'll take before A and B. I will ask though for advice from Gemma if she's here somewhere. Um, if we can, if we have, oh, there she is. If we have a deferral, would, would the officers be able to cope with this? Do we run out of time or is it okay? Excuse me, sorry. <coughs> I would like to actually potentially come back on a, on a couple of um, issues that have been raised first, if possible, Chair, before we move on to um, talking about a deferral, maybe to maybe to give um, members some comfort really about some of the recurring themes that have been coming up, if that's um, if that's possible. Um, sorry, would you bear with yes, me? Sorry, I was just coughing at that time. <clears throat> Apologies, members. So one of the yeah, please don't go down with COVID. Recurring. Pardon? Oh, sorry. I just <laughs> no, said don't go there with COVID. You were coughing. <laughs> no, sorry. I did. I needed a drink. So the re the, the, one of the reoccurring themes that seems to be coming through with the concerns for members is the impact on the biodiversity of the site. Um, I will again just remind members that the proposal has been thoroughly reviewed by both Natural England and by Surrey Wildlife Trust. They've taken into consideration um, the previous application, the um, temporary consent itself uh, resulted in um, new habitats, particularly for the sand lizards, and this current proposal will continue the management of that. Um, the environmental management plan also contains a number of quite robust um, uh, conditions um, in or mitigation methods, I should say, beg your pardon, not conditions, but mitigation measures that have been, again, reviewed by Natural England and by Surrey Wildlife Trust. And both those professional bodies are satisfied that um, the filming for the, the period required in a permanent state um, would not cause harm to the biodiversity on the site. Uh, um, in particular, the sand lizards are, tend, tend to have more protection during a filming event. Um, at, when a filming event has happened, the sand lizard area habitats are cordoned off to prevent the filming crews from trampling through the site. When the site is um, not got a filming event, members of the public are free to walk through those habitats. So there is an element of you know, the proposal actually also being of some benefit um, to the biodiversity on the site. Um, also, the environment management plan is it is a working document. One of the reasons why we're we're seeking to obviously is it's not only to give members some confidence for some control, but it's also to ensure that the environment and the biology on the site is um, you know all the um, reviews and assessments are kept up to standards to ensure that there is no harm being caused or what sort of benefits are being. Um, 
uh, created by having uh, the filming on the site. So for example, like I said, with the sand lizards, you know, the sand lizard population has gone up because of the greater protection. Um, there have been some other co comments as well about neighbouring amenity, particularly in relation to lights in the night shoots. Uh, I mean, the night shoots under this current application um, would be controlled until um, 11 o'clock uh, at night. That's an, an hour earlier than the, the previous permission, albeit that there is a, um, a more um, unlimited um, aspect to the seven days previously um, allowed. But um, I mean, part of the um, environment management plan also provides some um, communication methods with local, local neighbours. So for example, well, if a night shoot is if there is going to be um, potentially lights up until 11 o'clock, the um, surrounding neighbours will be notified directly by the production companies. There will be notices put up on, on local boards. So member, the, the, the members of the public will be made aware, particularly the residents, that there will be some occasions where you know, there will be disruption up until 11 o'clock at night for them. Um, with regards to lights on other sites, um, I mean, th that's outside of this application. While I appreciate that, um, you know, there are permitted development rights on other sites, change of use of land, which, which you know, could um, help facilitate some of the shoots. Um, you know, that, that really is unfortunately not something that we can control as part of this application and um, would therefore be in subject to sort of environmental health investigations. You know, there shouldn't, you know, if there's lights being on a different site outside of the Bourne Woods all night, then um, obviously that needs to be reported and investigated. Um, in terms of the impact on the AOMB, the AOMB officer, uh, you know, was consulted on the planning application, didn't raise an objection. And that was again on the basis of the uh, mitigation measured in the, um, the environment management plan um, and again you know members do have control over being able to review that document every five years the um, the sort of permanency of the site is not it, it, it's it, you know it will, will there, there will still be um, that, that opportunity if it was attempt you know we don't seem to see there being any difference at the end of five years of being able to review the conditions as there would be at the end of five years being able to review the environment management plan if something hasn't worked we'll be able to amend the environment management plan at that time in the five years um, it would be exactly the five years temporary consent we would then have to review the conditions again um, so there really is that control there for members um, if that's if that's what they are concerned about um, I think I think that's everything. Oh, uh, there was one last question about where the number of the um, the cars came from, the 476 cars prior to planning permission being required for the site. I mean, that that comes from the environmental transport. Um, sorry, beg your pardon. The transport statement that uh, that was the subject of a sensitivity test, um, where what they've uh, they done is they've, they've the number of cars on the, the road network and what can be accommodated on that road network before planning permission is required um, you know to, to see if there's any greater impact by more cars um, right thank you hey Jim, before you go can I just ask please about the def if proposed deferral if this was to be actioned would we be able to do this or are, are we out of time or are there any other impediments I, I believe we could, members are in the position to defer if that is, oh, um, I, I would just, oh sorry, beg your pardon, members are able to defer if that is their choice, the application is is, is still live, I mean there won't be a decision made on it, so it uh, it would be up to the um, the applicants to, we would then discuss with them the reasons for the, the deferral. Thank you, in that case, uh, Councillor Coburn, I believe you have a Proposal to put forward. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Uh, I would just propose deferring this for further consultation on the hours of operation and the permanency. Just the it's the figures really, not not, not the filming. Don't have a problem with that. It's the uh, the, the conditions basically. Okay, thank you for that, um, Kimberly. Have you got a name as second? I know several people said they would. Have you got a, a, a seconder noted? I had Councillor Keane down. Thank you. Uh, and can we put up a poll to do it? Are, are you able to do that now? There we are. 
So it is quite straightforward. All those in favour of a deferment, please vote now. Councillor Keane, four. Thank you, Councillor Keane. So if I just share the results and with Councillor Keane's vote in favour of deferring, that's nine in favour, two against and one abstention. So that's deferred. Thank you very much, uh, Fiona. In that case, there's no point taking the recommendations. We've done that. So we now move on to the next one, which is the 8.2 application for land at three forest Dale, uh, A2 WA 2020 1789. And if I could ask Jessica to present it, please. Thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, councillors. The next item on the agenda is Three Forestdale Hindhead. The proposal is for the erection of a new dwelling with provision of one new vehicular access and associated works. The application has been brought to committee at the request of councillors Isha Wood and Davidson for further consideration on matters relating to visual immunity, residential immunity, and the standard of accommodation proposed. Um, so, members will have received the update sheet which states that. Two additional objection comments were made by third party representations. These individuals were already listed in the number of objections and their comments have been taken into account in the report. Um, there was also an amendment to condition 10 and, and the addition of condition 13. Um, the recommendation has not changed and subject to conditions one to 12, set out in the agenda report and condition 13 contained in this update, the application is recommended for approval. So the application site is located in the developed area of Hindhead. The application site is the land outlined in red, currently part of the garden of three Forestdale Hindhead. Uh, this map shows the surrounding local area of Hindhead and the spread of development within the area. So this is the proposed site plan. Uh, the dwelling would be located 1.7 metres to the 0.7 metres to the nearest boundary with two forest dale to the north. And the rear of the property would also be located 5.7 metres from the rear elevation to St Anthony's, which is to the northeast and Copper Beach to the uh, southeast. So now onto the proposed elevations. The proposed elevations show the chalet bungalow style design with low eaves. The front and south side elevations show that the dwelling would have roof lights at first floor level and no windows proposed at first floor level in either side elevations. In the rear and north side elevation, you can see that there are no windows proposed at first floor level in the side elevation and the rear roof lights at first floor level are high level roof lights which have been conditioned to be 1.7 metres above finished floor level. The proposed ground floor plan shows how dwelling would provide adequate space and amenity in terms of the quality of accommodation. And the same can be said for the proposed first floor where the standard of accommodation is considered acceptable. So the proposed street scene shows how the dwelling would look within the street compared to the nearby neighbouring properties. So you can see two Forestdale there and the existing bungalow of three Forestdale. Um, and then now some site visit photographs, which are taken from the street scene, looking into the application site from Forestdale Road. Um, and here's some further images of the site from a high level to show the slope of the street and the site. Uh, 
Uh, here are some of my site visit photographs, which taken from the street scene, looking into the application site from first, sorry. Here are some further photographs from the site to show the impact on neighbouring amenity. So these photos show what is visible of the neighbouring property Copper Beach. No, no sorry. Um, A shows the neighbouring property to Forestdale and you can also see St Anthony's in the background as well. And then this photo shows um, the opposite side of Forestdale when viewed from the application site. I think I might have missed, sorry, I might have missed this slide. So this is my site photos of um, looking into the neighbouring property Copper Beach from two different angles. Okay, so the main matters for consideration are the impact on visual amenity, the impact on residential amenity and the quality of accommodation, highway safety and parking. These have each been assessed within the officer's report and the officer considered the proposal to not materially impact upon the design and visual amenity of the area, nor would it materially impact on the residential amenity of nearby occupiers. Um, so the officer concludes that the proposal is in accordance with the development plan and as such, is recommending the application for approval. So I'll stop my Thank you, Jessica. Thanks. Thank you, Jessica. Before we go on to questions, I've got two speakers. Um, as they are aware, they have four minutes, so please no longer. So I could first call on Tom Hanrahan, who is speaking on objection. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. Um, Yes, uh, so I'm a resident of Two Forestdale. Um, so the proposed development is uh, about 700 mil from um, a mature fence on my southern boundary. Um, so that would be one of my key concerns in relation to root protection zone, given that um, I think the calculation from the um, diameter of the of the trunk of the tree at chest height you know means that it should be a 2.2 meter um root protection zone um but the the, the foundations of the building would, would only be 700 millimeters from uh my boundary so that that's that's one concern uh, that i've got in addition to that um you know i'd just like to say that i i'm not against any developments on, on that site. And, and I think, you know, a bungalow is, is appropriate. I just think this particular bungalow is a bit too large uh, compared to the size of the plot. So that plot would end up being the smallest plot in Forestdale and it would, the, the, the development would end up being, um, you know, one of the largest in terms of um, square meterage uh, properties. So I, I do think it is too large for the plot, and I think it's too close to uh, to the, the boundary with with two Forestdale. Um, I don't think it's particularly in keeping with the rest of Forestdale, uh, and I think there's a distinct lack of um, you know garden and amenity space that will be left um, after the after the development uh, you know such a size is uh, is constructed. Um, I think they were my main points that I wanted to make. Um, I think I'll, I'll leave it there. Thanks. Thank you, Mr. Hanrahan. If I can now call on Andrew Bandos, if I've pronounced that correctly, he's the agent and wishes to speak to support it. Andrew, you're muted. Is that better? <clears throat> can yes, you hear me? Better, thank you. Yes, Great, we thank can you. hear you now. Good evening, members. My name. Great. Good evening, members. My name is Andrew Bandos, and I'm a planning consultant speaking on behalf of my client, Mr. and Mrs. Kieran, in support of their planning application at Three Forestdale Hindhead. The applicants are a retired elderly couple who are looking to downsize and build their own small chalet dwelling in the garden of Number Three Forestdale, whilst enabling their family members to move into Number Three. The applicants require care and assistance due to their ages and medical conditions. With family members moving into their property, they will be in a better position to receive care as in their old age. 
As set out in the officer's report, the proposal seeks to erect a new two bedroom chalet dwelling sited in the northern part of the garden area of number three. The first floor area will be fully contained within the roof pitch with no dormer windows proposed. The extended garden area on which the proposed dwelling would be sited is not used by the occupiers of number three due to its distance from the house and raised level. The existing house already has a private garden area to the side and rear, which is adequate for the needs of existing and future occupiers of this property. Forestdale has a mixed character dwellings. Whilst dwellings tend to be of detached with a predominance of bungalows in Forestdale, there are also detached two-storey dwellings. Plot sizes in the area vary. As the officer's report states, the size of the proposed plot is not out of character in the immediate area. Indeed, we welcome your officer's report's favourable recommendation and the detailed justification for the proposals set out within the report. The report covers all the material planning considerations, including the proposal's acceptability in terms of its immediate character, its suitable design, and its limited impact on its surroundings. Helpfully, the report identifies each of the neighbouring dwellings and assesses the proposed impact on those amenities of the occupiers of these properties, concluding that the proposal does not have a detrimental impact on the amenities of these neighbouring occupiers or indeed the character and appearance of the area. The planning application has been significantly amended from what was originally submitted. The applicants have sought to address the concerns raised by the neighbours and have reduced the height of the des and design of the proposed dwelling in order to address neighbour concerns. Members will note from the amended plans that the proposed dwelling would be sited to the north of the donor property and would front onto For Forestdale with car parking to the side and in front of the existing garage block. The proposal site is positioned on a slightly raised area of ground to the north of the existing garage block. The levels on site will be lowered to ensure that the height of the dwelling is domestic in scale and proportion, ensuring the dwelling has a maximum height of only 6.9 metres when viewed from the pavement level. The garage block would be retained and would separate the proposed dwelling from the existing property on site. The new property would be sited a minimum distance of 16.7 metres away from the existing dwelling. The siting is therefore considered to be very much in keeping with the pattern of development in Forest Dale, with properties set back and fronting the road. So north of the application site is number two, which is a two-storey dwelling and sited a distance of 21 metres from the northern boundary of the application site. An existing tall hedge of some three metres in height on the boundary with the application site is sited uh, close to the garden of, was sited within the garden number two. The proposed dwelling would be sited a minimum of 0.7 metres and splaying away from the boundary to a distance of 1.7 metres of this boundary, which will ensure that it is not unduly prominent when viewed from number two. The officer's report states that the proposal will be part of the street scene that has decreased decreasing ridge heights from north to south as the, as the majority of Forestdale slopes down from north to south. To the east of the neighbouring property, Copper Beach has extensive tree screening on the boundary with the application site. The proposed dwelling will be sited a minimum of 5.7 metres away from this boundary. There are no first floor windows in the rear elevation other than the roof lights, which would be positioned at a height of 1.7 metres above the internal floor level. Uh, no, can you start winding up now, please? Yes. Um, the yeah, members will note the officer's report highlights the concerns raised by objects and sets out how the proposal has been amended to address these concerns. Uh, we hope you concur with the officer's advice where they conclude by stating the proposal is considered to be in accordance with the development plan and rec recommend the scheme for approval. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, Mr. Bandosh. Right, now I will now open it obviously up to the uh, councillors for questions. I have no, ah, oh, we are. Councillor Isherwood. Thank you, Chairman. I'll start by uh, making a note. Um, the agent architect's comments, lengthy comments in his response to the planning officer, where he's answered many of the uh, uh, comments of uh, the neighbours who are opposing this application. He was aware, or they were aware, the application was shortly coming to Waverley Western Planning Committee uh, Surrey Highways last month had asked for a rapid response in late January prior to this meeting. I was somewhat surprised that the agent wasn't aware the revised application was going to Hazemere Town Council Planning Committee, as the agent's address is in Hazemere. Really surprising he didn't attend the public Zoom meeting to discuss the application when Mr. Hanrahan uh, came in. The town hall publishes agendas 
simply can't advise all applicants individually of the agenda. So that's my uh, answer to uh, that lengthy uh, reply to the officers. Commenting further, land ownership that a neighbor challenges is a civil matter beyond the planning system. That's a sad fact. It's the second such problem we've, that's come to the surface here in Hyde Ward in recent times. I note that what was originally described as a three bedroom chalet bungalow is now a two bedroom plus craft room as stated on page 59 of our agenda report. Bedroom three is now called a craft room. What's in a name, members? I hear you ask. When this chalet bungalow is sold in future years, I imagine it will again become a three bedroom chalet bungalow. The size of the craft room has not changed. I note the lower ridge height and also in the small print mention of air, air source heat pumps, a real acknowledgement of global warming, a system which hopefully we'll see a great deal more of in the future. My experience is certainly good uh, in practice. I wonder about the photovoltaic panels on the east facing roof, uh, asked the officers whether that really is going to work. The report fails on pages 60 and 61 to point out that the front faces west and the rear faces east. It shows the faces facing south and north, but um, members, you should be aware that the photovoltaic cells are on the eastern side of the house. My main concern, however, is what remains is the lack of amenity space in this three bedroom home. We're all aware after last year, the pandemic, how important both for physical and mental health space is. Amenity space is important. This to my mind is a cramped site, not appropriate in its terms of scale and mass in the street scene. I'm sorry, I just feel that it's too big a property on that plot. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Councillor Ishwood. Councillor Deer, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, and his last, his last remarks there, Mr. Uh, Councillor Isherwood has sort of slightly taken the wind out of my sails. I mean, as a matter of principle, I don't have a problem with the development of this sort here. Um, but I do think it's uh, within a very, very uh, narrow, uh, close confines of the uh, adjoining property, which I never like. Um, I mean, I, I loathe hipped, hipped gables, which is what uh, the applicant has attempted, how, which is how the applicant has attempted to mitigate the effects of the roof, the roof line, which is in the circumstances, fair enough. Um, but I just think it's, it, as I say, no objection to the principle. I think this is too much on too small a site. And for that reason, I think I will be uh, objecting to it. Thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Deer. Councillor Coburn. Yes, thank you. I could almost just say ditto. But I mean, if you look at the layout on page 58, um, the forest, I mean, I happen to know the road quite well. I had a friend who used to live, well, she may still live down there for the last touch. I mean, it's minute as a, as a splot. So yes, you could put something on it. I'm not denying that. But to put on a plot that is already small by Forestdale size, I mean, it just seems um, completely wrong somehow then to fill it with the built form. And as people who've listened to me often enough will know, I don't like anything that has to be sort of botched to fit in. I always feel it's an admission of poor design. So if you've got to alter the roof and put roof lights in, um, you know, you're, you're and back to my glazed, obscured glazing, which I can't stand, you know, anything like that to me says, this is too big. You're having to squeeze it in, manipulate the form to fit it in. And I just think, yes, a, a small bungalow on this site would probably be perfectly acceptable. But I think this in terms of character, will completely destroy the character. I can't see those photographs we saw 
Um, it was lovely when we first went in to see the photographs that the officer showed us. And then this is just so in your face built with no immunity space, no attempt to have any biodiversity net gain or even hold on to anything we've got. So I'm afraid I, I just feel this is cramped. It's just the wrong development. And um, I think it should be rethought. If you want to build on this side, I think there's something better you can do. Um, and I think uh, we can come up with a better design, more uh, aesthetic, but also less damaging to the character of the area. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Coburn. Councillor Neil. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, my first reaction is that it is a rather a big building on a small site. Um, most of us here probably are fortunate enough to have um, a building on a rather larger site. But, you know, we are not necessarily typical. Um, spaces at a premium geographically these days. Um, so people do accept smaller sites. Uh, the, the, the design of the house looks um, quite attractive, you know, from the inside. Um, there's limited space outside, yes, but that won't worry a lot of people who would um, either now, particularly because uh, that's what they want to do, or in the future would probably find acceptable. So I, I think, you know, we have to um, go with the times a little bit here and accept that it's, it's, um, it's got a place in its own way, um, you know, and that's just being realistic about um, the use of space in the future and uh, providing more housing to my mind. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Neil. Councillor Keane. Uh, thank you, Chair. Um, well, I have to agree with um, previous speakers. Um, I think the bulk and the mass of this um, bungalow is totally out of keeping with the other um, plots in that particular area. Um, very concerned about the amenity space, as Councillor Isherwood said, you have to have a certain amount of amenity space. And this is so squeezed into that plot. Um, and I, I think it, it just does nothing for that area at all. It, and I don't think there's much imagination that's gone into that building anyway. Um, so, you know, for me, I cannot support this. I think it's totally out of keeping. Um, and I just agree with all the other speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Keane. Uh, Councillor Edmund, you've not spoken yet, so I'll take you before Councillor Isherwood. Councillor Edmund. Thank you very much, Chair. I just have one question, really, and um, my concern is that the local town council's um, information, uh, sorry, decisions are taken into account. I do have a problem with essentially a lot of time effort being used to develop design statements, and now say that from the Hesmere town council is that this design does not conform to the Hesmere design statement. If that's correct, then I would be voting um, voting against the development unless somebody can confirm that it does conform. Thank you, Councillor Edmonds. Uh, Councillor Isherwood, you wanted to come back? Thank you, Chairman. Very briefly, just say if you look at uh, page 59 of the agenda report, you'll see that the cars have got more space than the amenity space to the east of the uh, building. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Isherwood. No, I have no more hands shown. Councillor Edmonds, did you want an answer now to your question? Yes, please, Chairs. It, it depends on how I vote. Uh, Chris, you wanted to come back. Ap apologies, could you just repeat the question briefly just so that we can make sure we... Because it was a, a couple of people ago. From his... Sorry. There is a comment from Hesmere to it doesn't, this development does not conform with the Hesmere design statement. Is that correct? Um, thank you. Thank you, Chairman. And um, thank you, Councillor Evans. The, um, well, we, we're of the view that it does conform in terms of, in terms of character. The, um, if you look at the, um, the position of it within the street scene there, um, there are quite significant breaks between the, um, the buildings. It's a bungalow, which is of um, kind of limited um, limited bulk and mass. Um, so, I mean, the point that you're raising is is one that is a subjective point and one that we actually feel as officers that it does 
um, it does comply with the with the character of the area. You've got good spacing between the buildings. The building itself is not um, not that substantial. The um, there was one other point, if if I may, that where there was some discussion about the um, the size of the the building in internally. Um, the report does cover that it does comply with the nationally described space standard in terms of um, in terms of space in the building. Um, I note the comments about the um, about the outdoor space. Um, the um, from our point of view, um, there there is um, sufficient space for a small a small bungalow. But um, but I, I note the comments that have been made. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, Chris. While, while you're on um, on page nine of twenty two, in the box at the top, the third bullet point says it did not conform to the Hazelmere design statement. Bear with me. Sorry, Chairman, did you say page nine? I'm I'm just um Yeah, page nine of yeah, on page sixty five or nine 65. of twenty two. I don't mind which. Okay. Bullet point three. It comes from the Hazemere Town Council. Oh, okay. Um, oh, is, is that in the consultee section that you're referring to? It is. Yeah, um, I, I think the point that, um, Chairman, thank you. The the point that I, I yeah, I see where I see where you're referring referring to there now. Actually, um, the that's the that's the objection from Hazemere Town Council. But the whether it complies in design terms is a is a subjective matter in, in officers. Um, it well, it is a subjective matter, and um, and just yeah, we, we we take on we yeah we take into account the comments that we've got, but we still have applied our own um, our yeah our own judgment to to that in character terms. And actually, yeah, whilst we note that the town council are saying that it doesn't comply with the the design statement, actually, as officers, we've looked at the spacing and the size of the unit and. Um, the fact that there is quite a bit of relief around the building, um, we feel it does comply with the um, with the design statement on on that ground. Thank, you. thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Jessica. You have your hand up. Hi. Yes. Thank you. Um, I was just going to come back on a couple of things. So, I was just going to kind of reiterate what um, Chris said about the design statement. So it is in regards to the character of the area so that's part of the um design statement in hazelmere is that you know it should respect and be sympathetic to the character of the area and um, so that's um in the report i think I've, I've gone on about that and assessed it and that's obviously um the the town council's opinion and yeah um and then the other thing was also the landscaping so um i think you could see from my pictures uh, the street scene there was originally a hedge there and um, tree officers comments were in regards to reinstating that tree so I think that's part of condition 10 um, so is to look to try and um, enhance the uh, landscaping scheme yeah thank you hey Jessica uh, councillor George Hess thank you chair um Mr. Hanrahan earlier referred to the closeness um, to the building of a tree, and it's referred to in the Hazelmere Town Council um, comments. It's the last item. Officers should look at the root protection zone referred to in the application. Um, could that be clarified for us, please? Thank you, Chair. Jessica, do you want to come back or Chris? Um. <clears throat> Thank you, Chairman. I, I've had a, had a quick look through the documents that are with the um, that are on you know on on the system, and the we've consulted with our tree officer on the um, on on the application, and they've supplied a um, arboricultural report and, and survey, and and there's no um, the comment from our tree officer is that there's that there's no objection to any impact on any significant trees. So um, I, I don't know whether there's anything further, Jessica can. Um, clarify on that, but from our point of view, it's been yeah the, the tree report has been reviewed by our our tree officer. Yeah, I was just going to say that the same thing. Um, it was reviewed by the internal tree officer, and they did 
um, comment on it, and they didn't see any significant constraints from these. Thank you. And it's in the report. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair Jessica. Thank you, Chris. Um, in that case, I can't see any more hands, so we'll go to the vote. Um, there's only one recommendation. Subjects conditions one to twelve, and informatives one to seven. Permission be granted. Kimberly, can you put up the poll, please? Councillor Keane again. Thank you, Councillor Keane. So if I just share those results, that's two in favour, nine against, and no abstentions. So that recommendation has failed. Thank you very much. Now we obviously need to put a further recommendation. Councillor Isherwood, did you want to put the recommendations, one of the local ward councillors? My recommendation to refuse. I'll second that. Yeah, you, need, you need reasons, don't we? No, yeah, well, well, I'll, well, well, I second it, then you get reasons. Yeah. Thank you very much indeed. Okay. Um, uh, it's not appropriate to the uh, site in terms of scale and form. It's out of character with the area of Forest Dale, uh, lacking adequate amenity space, which is uh, D4 of 2002 or TD1 of LP1. That is uh, my view um, and still is. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Richard. Officers, are you happy, uh, Jessica? Is that okay as a refusal? Um, thank, thank you, Chairman. I've got I've got some wording around that, if that helps. That I've just um, as you as it's as that's come forward that I've just put together. Um, is it okay if I read quickly? Um, yes, briefly please. read. Um, so I've got something along the lines of the proposal by reason of its um, scale, um, height, mass, and spread of development, um, along with the lack of amenity space would result in a cramped, contrived development harmful to um, the character of the area, contrary to policy TD1 of the local plan part one and D4 of the 2002 local plan. Um, does that cover the discussion, Chairman? Thank you. Yes, I would say it does. Thank you, Chris. Um, so that's the recommendation. Now, the one that Chris has just read out. Kimberly, are you OK to put up a poll for that, please? There we go. So this uh, this alternative recommendation is to refuse planning permission. Sorry, yes, to refuse planning permission. <laughs> Thank you. So if I just share the results there, that's nine in favour of refusal, one against, and one abstention. So that's refused. Right. Lovely. Thank you. Uh, Chris, you've got everything you want from that, have you? Yes. Lovely. Thank you, Chairman. Thanks very much. There are no items um, subject to public speaking on the uh, item nine. So therefore, we don't need to exclude the present public. There's nothing there. So in fact, that's the end of the meeting. Can I say thank you all for coming? Um, and Sorry, do I hear something? No? Okay, well, thank you all very much for coming. Good night. Good night. Good night, John.